This is Free Range Digital Design Foundation Modeling. This is chapter 23, lecture number four. And so we've been working with designing counters using state machines, and we'll do a little bit more in this chapter. There's some other uh, details regarding state machine design that we need to fill in. This is our big circuit. We've seen this before. The issue here is we have uh, different modules in there, combinatorial modules, sequential modules, and computer peripheral modules. These are all digital modules. They need to be controlled by something. And we are controlling with a state machine, which is hardware control. In real life, by all means, you could control them with a microcontroller, which is software control. We have been developing state machines, and some of them had an interesting property that we need to discuss. Now, the issue here is uh, some state machines don't utilize every possible state. For example, if I have five states, that requires uh, three, we'll say three flip-flops. With three flip-flops, I have a possibility of eight unique values, which means eight unique states. In this case, there's three states that are unused. So the question is, what happens if you magically end up in one of these unused states, which you could uh, due to circuit noise or crosstalk or cosmic rays or something something un, uh, unplanned for. And so the issue is that these state machines are really easy to design them to make them self-correcting, which means if I happen to end up in an invalid state or an unused state, I am going to direct that unused state back to a used state and just using the same design techniques we used before. So this is best understood in an example. So let's do an example. Here is an example and we're not going to do the entire example. It's too long, but we will talk about it. So what we have here is a, a this is the sequence we're interested in. If we look at the sequence, it has one, two, three, four, five unique numbers in that sequence, which means I need three state variables. So if I add three state variables to encode five unique numbers, that means I have three unused numbers. So the old way we've been doing it is, is just to kick out this diagram here, uh, which means the question is, what are those three states doing? And so here is a, here's a full diagram with, with all eight states. If we don't specifically assign the states to do something, it may end up looking like this. Now those unused states could be uh, have like a self loop on them which is a hang state uh, or it could be like a cycle here and I don't know if you can call it a hang cycle if you want. Ends up here it stays there uh, whereas to make it self correcting all we need to do is take those unused states and direct them back to a used state. And this is very straightforward too in state machine design. It's just a matter of assigning the next state for these unused states before we might just ignore them. Now we need to assign them. Here is a problem. We're not, once again, we're not going to do this problem. It's just too long. We have a short problem we can do at the end, but there's everything we need to know in this problem. So this circuit has a sequence of one, two, three, four, five. There's five unique numbers in the sequence, which means I need three bits to encode it, three flips up. We'll say that means we have th three unused states. We got five states we need to encode using three flip-flops, which is going to leave us with three unused states. And what we want to do is take those states and direct them back to count four. So one of the counts in the sequence is four. So the other issue here is we need to look at what we need to encode here. We know there's three state, the, the width of the state registers is three but we need to uh, establish the width of the output. We need to encode 30. That's our biggest number. That's going to require five bits, and that's why this output here is five. So the interior, we can see that the interior state register bits are three, but the outside to, to encode that actual count is, is going to take five bits. Here's everything again, um, but what I've done here is taken those three extra states and sent them back to a, a U state and called out to send it back to the state of four and that's what we've done so this is the count of four and that's where we send it back to one thing to notice in this diagram is the fact that we'll look back at this thing this necessarily is a melee machine because depending on what hold is 
hold affects the output. So when the hold is asserted, the output count is halved. That means I can't put the output in the state diagram. The output has to go with the, with the H input. We'll see that in an example later. That's the melee output for the count because its count is partially based on the, the external hold input, uh, which we see here. You can see the hold connected there, but it's also based on the state. Uh, lastly here, this is our self-correcting. The output's always one, 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 as it's called out in the problem. It always goes, transitions unconditionally back to state four, as called out by the problem. We're not going to be doing a lot of these problems, but it's important that you understand what, exactly what we're trying to do here. So this is kind of a set of rules to help you through these problems. So when you do these problems, the first thing you need to establish is the width of the state register. And that has to do with the number of states, which of course has to do with the number of numbers in the given sequence. Okay, next thing we need to establish the inputs, the next state decoder, essentially the next state decoder it's always going to have the state as an input, but it could have external values such as a hold or a count enable and, or an up and down as an input to the next state decoder also. Now the output decoder is a little bit more complicated because I need to do two things. For one, I need to establish the width of the output. With the output needs to typically minimize it, it's still going to be able to encode the largest value that I need to encode. And lastly here, uh, I need to read the problem very carefully and decide whether they are the outputs are more outputs or melee outputs. So this is our example problem here. It's very similar to what we've been doing. The issue here is it's a little bit simpler. So essentially it's, uh, this is my count, count sequence here that I want to design a counter that counts in that sequence. So the first thing to notice is establish how many bits I need for the state register. There's two, or I see three values there. I'm gonna need a state register that's two bits wide. And that looks good. The width of the output register, I need to encode 16. To encode 16, I need five bits for that. Four bits only gets me up to 15. If I read the problem very carefully, I see that the output is based on the hold input. And so essentially what is gonna happen here, the hold is asserted, it's not gonna count, but it's also gonna have the uh, current output. Let's do this problem. I got a little bit more room here. Output count, we established it needs to be five bits wide. It is gonna be clocked and it has a hold input, which I think I'll just leave at H. So next thing I need to do is draw a state diagram. I think I'll... It has four states. Those are my four states. Uh, it's, I'm going to give these states a name and if I end up in my legal state I'm going to go back to 6 unconditionally and the output is going to be all zeros. State 6 here, I have two things going on in each of these states. I've got the hold asserted and the hold unasserted. So when the hold is unasserted it's going to transition. When hold is asserted, it's, it's going to be a self loop. It's not going to transition. What we need to do is stick the outputs in this thing. So I've got an output for the illegal state, which is all zeros. And I need an output for the normal states. Okay, so here we go. This is state six. So I'm going to code six if the hold is not asserted. If the hold is asserted, it's half of six, which is zero, 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 one, one, which is three. Okay, continue on here. Next state, this is S equals S10. Uh, we're gonna encode that as zero, one, zero, one, zero. Otherwise, it's half, zero, zero, one, zero, one. Here we go, S16. If it's holding, it's halved, it's, it's zero. 1000 zero, 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 which is 8 otherwise the if it's not holding the count is uh, is a 16 so once again these are this is the count variable and i am done with that state diagram next thing i want to do in this thing is draw the underlying hardware for this one uh, we uh, we we established that it's a 2 bit uh, register 
and we have an output decoder the output of this output decoder is the count which is five bits and it's a normal state machine so this the state is going to be fed to the next state decoder and this is two bits wide also this is going to be sd plus the hold input is going to go into the next state decoder but by all means it is going to also be in the output decoder since the output is half when that when I'm in a hold condition. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Lastly, I need to, to generate a table. So this table is very special. I'm going to combine both the next day decoder table as well as the output decoder table in the same table. I'm going to be very careful with it. Okay, so this is going to be my next state decoder. This is going to be my output decoder. I, you know, I'm going to put another column in here. Call it state. Unfortunately, I ran right into that. So this is going to be S underscore 6. This is arbitrary. S underscore 10. Not well thought out. S underscore 16. So these, these could be in any order. I just have to make it consistent. If I'm in this state, S6, and the hold is not asserted, I go to 0, 01. Otherwise, I go back to 0, 0. If I'm in state 0, 01, and the hold's not asserted, I go to 1, 0. Otherwise, I stay in 0, 01. If I'm in 1, 0, and hold is not asserted, I go to 0, 0. Otherwise, I stay in 1, 0. And this is the illegal state. I'm in the legal state, I always go back to the state associated with S6, which is 0, 0. It doesn't matter what the condition of hold is. So lastly here, I've got the count output. And I'm in state 0, 0, it's, and it's not being held, so I'll just put the normal count in there. There's 6. I'm going to put all the normal counts in there for the issue of the, the hold is not asserted. There's, there's 6, there's 10, there's 16, and now we can have these for the case when the hold is asserted. So it's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, which is 3, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, which is 5, and half of 16 is 8, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. The output in this state is all zeros as described by the problem. This is the legal state. What it says is when it's in the legal state, the output's all zeros. I am done with this. This is necessarily a melee machine. Let's check it out. This is state zero, zero, and the output changes in that state. The output can change in that state. Sometimes it's six, sometimes it's three. You can see this with the other states also. Now, I could arrange this table a little bit differently, but I think this is the cleanest, easiest way to arrange the table. I put the states together, it makes it much more readable. And I am going to call this problem done.